Now, I just wanted to show you a few things just for term terminology sake. So here is an example of what we call a tissue former or healing cap. And this is often placed when, so when we place that implant at, at surgery, when we take extract, oftentimes we'll place the implant the same day and we put what we call a tissue former in or a healing abutment. And what that does is it goes on top so the bone would come up to here and you see it like this. If the implant goes in really well, then what you end up seeing is something like this poking up out of the tissue, just, just that portion there. And that makes it so that you don't have to come back and cut the patient open to get access to the implant. Because what happens is if you left it like this and we just put a cover on it, this tissue actually fills in over the top of this. And then when they come back and we have to cut that open and then put a tissue former in uh, so that we can then take an impression or scan the teeth later on to build a, a bridge on top of it. But an abutment, so this is still considered abutment, but it's not an abutment that we build a crown on top of. This is uh, commonly called a tissue former, uh, uh, healing, healing abutment, and it can come in different sizes. These are all different sizes. You can see here, depending on the space that the, we, we need to, meaning essentially when we put that implant into bone, if the patient, if, if, if there's a big space, big wide gap, this allows us to be able to build the crown in such a way that it expands out. If, if, if we wanted to put this type of crown in here, then we'd want our tissue to be pushed out and held that way. But that's, sometimes the tissue is really thick and you can see like this one here, there's a big difference that's here. This is a big difference. Maybe the tissue is super, super thick right there. And so we need a longer uh, tissue former. Okay. And so, so we call those abutments, but they're tissue formers or healing, healing abutments. They're just in, uh, in term. It's just for a short period of time. Let me show you a couple other types of abutments. So here are a few different other abutments that you might see. And these are just different versions. And this is why going back to this model here, when the screw is attached to the abutment and it goes in, it limits, it really limits what you can do, how you can change this. And so when we have a two piece implant, two piece, when we have a, a separate screw, then what we have is that we can basically change the way that abutment is on top. And so these are just different versions that you see here. This here is a, we call a non-indexing, meaning that it doesn't index into the implant. You'll see it just attaches down just like that, okay? Versus this one here where you actually see it index in. See there where it locks in and it is a taper going inward like this. If you were to look down this, see that it tapers out slightly. And then there's these hexes in a sense that interdigitate inside there. And so it really locks in. So this is one better for a single implant. If we're doing a bridge, then we need to do something more similar to this because oftentimes implants aren't perfectly parallel. And so this allows us to be able to, to correct for that. The last abutment I want to show you, oh, here, the last two abutments I want to show you, this is an example of a, an abutment that's used to take, to take an impression. So an impression material squirted around here. It's actually this material here. It's squirted around here and it, and it grabs the location. This is analog style, old school for, for me. I don't, I haven't done this for five, maybe six years. I, I do everything digitally now with a, a scanner, but this is what is used. But this could still be in a sense, a type of abutment that you could scan and get the position of it also. Okay. You can see that's much bigger than any of these. Okay, last abutment that I wanna show you is something uh, we call a multi-unit abutment. And the reason why is because this is a multi-unit. Again, it does index in. So you see index in like this, but you'll notice that when we put this screw in, the screw always has to go down the long axis of the tooth. So that goes there, okay. So we can screw this in like this. Okay. 
and it's gonna tighten in. But you'll notice this one looks a little bit different, right? Hopefully you're picking up on that. So you'll see this little number, see how it says 17 there? The reason that is is because this is called an angle correcting, meaning it corrects the angle. Let's say we put the implant in this way to avoid a sinus or we avoid an, a nerve. It allows us to put the implant in this way and then it corrects so that when we go to put a, a bridge on top of it, it ends up, we can still put the bridge like this. Okay, so instead of the bridge being like this that matches the trajectory, now we can put the bridge. And so this is called an angle correcting, specifically 17 degree angle correcting multi-unit, and we call it multi because instead of having just one abutment, again, in the scenarios we're talking about, we have just implant, abutment, and crown. Now, this is actually a little more complex because multi-unit meaning that we have an implant, then we have one abutment, and then we actually have a second abutment that goes on top of that abutment. And then that goes into the crown. And I don't actually have a model for that, but imagine, in a sense, this here, where you have, oh, let's use this. Imagine this going on top of here. Imagine that here going over the top, okay, perfectly. And then you, then you have the bridge on top of there. So multi-unit, two units with a bridge on top, okay? Usually, most of the time we do multi-units, we're using bridges. When I say most time, I can't think of a scenario where you would use a multi-unit without having a bridge. And I, I hope this video has is, is been really helpful for you.